What's the word, y'all? Today, we had a three-game slate, and they were all game sixes. And I was super excited because I'm just thinking to myself, the team that is in the lead has to go on the opposing team's court and secure this win. And me, I love a win-to-go-home game, so I was praying that we at least got one game seven out of it, but we did not. It's crazy how things go, man, because this could have been the last game of this current Utah Jazz team, and it was just an open Bogdanovich three, the most open three he's ever had in his career, just changed the course of history, and that team might get blown up. And we got teams like the Toronto Raptors where this is just the beginning of their journey. While the Utah Jazz, this might be their end. It's kind of weird, man. It's kind of weird. I'm not going to be doing round two predictions and breakdowns just yet. I'm going to give myself a couple days because it would be weird for me to come on here with Philly just secured the spot in the second round to try to give you all a deep dive, if you want to call them that, and, and, and the series versus the Miami Heat. So give me a couple days. We got a couple days before these series start, and then I'll do round two previews. But today, we got to talk about all these games. The Philadelphia 76 took care of business. Uh, Chris Paul had a legendary performance, and then, like I said, Bogdan of its head the most open shot of his career and he bricked it so we got a lot to talk about but before we do that let me talk to you about our sponsor which is of course prize picks they have been a sponsor for the entirety of this channel if you hit the link in the description and download the prize picks app and use code kenny they're matching all deposits up to 100 dollars. but today it's a little bit different because we're starting the prize picks kenny beecham sweepstakes have you ever wanted to fly to chicago and watch a bulls game live with me in the united center well now you got the chance all you have to do is use code kenny when you download prize picks and deposit it could be $5. It could be up to $100. You're automatically entered. I'm going to put that link in the description so you can hit it and download it. But also, I want y'all to go down there and look at all the terms. You have to be over 18 and be in a state where prize picks is available, which makes sense, right? You also only have until May 20th to enter. So you enter now in the next seasons when you get your prize, potentially. You have to be over 18. And we're talking about a free trip to Chicago and a free ticket to watch the game with me. It should be a lot of fun, man. And yes, if you've already used Code Kenny and you're one of the thousands of people that have used Code Kenny, you're automatically entered and we're drawing at the end of May. So hit that link in the description, download the Prize Picks app. I cannot wait to meet at least one of y'all in this sweepstakes. Shout out to Prize Picks, man. When they when they put this on my, my plate, I was like, absolutely. We got to go to a Bulls game. So we're doing it. All right, all right, all right. Let's talk about the Philadelphia 76ers preventing history, man. And, and you know what? I gotta be honest with you. I was rooting for history. I wasn't rooting against Philly, but I was rooting for for the, for the history. I'm not rooting against Doc Rivers. I got love for Doc Rivers, but I like to see history be made, and we were relatively close to seeing a team go up 3-0 and lose a seven-game series. Now, they had to lose these two games, and in the first half, it looked like it was a possibility. Then the third quarter happened, and boom. At the end of game number five, um, Joel B went to his post-game interview. He's like, hey, I want I want James Harden to be more aggressive. We know what James Harden can be. It just seems like he's trying to find his footing still, and today he came out, immediately scored eight straight points, got to the line. He was beating, off, beating his defenders off the dribble. And I'm like, yeah, this is the closest thing we've seen to the greatest version of James Harden since he got to Philly, and they're desperately going to need this in that Miami series. Again, I'm not giving y'all my breakdown just yet, but they're going to need James Harden to be able to do what he did tonight. 22 points, 15 assists, and just three turnovers, and a lot of that damage was done in the early of the game, and then we got to the third quarter, and Tyrese Maxey started to turn up his best game since, like, the first couple games of the series. Toby hit his shots, and Joel Embiid became dominant again. The last two games kind of scared me about their, like, overall chances of making a run because Joel Embiid's hand or ligament is torn, if you didn't know, and in the last couple games, since he tore it, he was looking like I don't want to say a shell of himself because that feels like a stretch, but he didn't look like the MVP that he had been in the regular season. In this game, he gave us an MVP caliber performance and, and stepped on the throat of the Toronto Raptors. But the Toronto Raptors and their fans have nothing to feel bad about because the fact that they were even in this place to be a five seed and to take two games away from the 76ers who were up 3-0 is, is, is great. Remember, this is a team that was not projected to even make the playoffs. Even before the season started, Masai came out and said, hey, this is like a, a rebuilding year. Those weren't his exact words, but he was saying Raptors fans lower your expectations man we got some young dudes out here we're not really expecting them to blossom and they did we had a bounce back season pascal siakam he went from all nba player to like somebody that people not hated but he obviously wasn't himself the last season and today this season He's back to an All-NBA player. Fred Van Vliet, though he was injured for the last couple games of the series, blossomed into an All-Star player. They got the Rookie of the Year. They got Preston Chulia. Preston Chulia's um, progression happened like throughout this season. I remember the first two months of the year, he could not hit a basket. Bro was shooting threes, and he was barely hitting rim. And then you look at the last three months of the season, bro was an efficient three-point shooter. Got his whole averages up, his three-point percentage up. And then in this playoff series, he was really uh, uh, instrumental to the couple games they won. Now today, not the greatest of games for him, but still, that's a building block they got 
in the trade. At least they can look at that and say, hey, we traded away the greatest rapper of all time, Raptor of all time, and we got back somebody that we believe could be a part of our future. Chris Boucher is up for an extension or free agency, and I'm very, very curious to see what his mark is going to be like because a game like this, he almost single-handedly kept them in this game, or he did single-handedly keep them in this game early on, and obviously second half hit around and they were struggling. Uh, the 76 brought out this zone very early on, and that zone kind of hurt them a lot. I think the future of this team, this might be a very dull, if you want to use that word, offseason for them because it's just about Scotty's progression. It's about Gary Trent Jr., OG Ananobi staying healthy, Preston Chuya. But I would love to see them go out there and get more shooting because the shooting was one of the biggest downsides of this team this entire season. So if they go out there around the edges to get shooting, I don't mean they got to come in and get a superstar that can shoot the ball, but just like players that can play adequate amount of minutes and, and stretch the floor for them. Um, the defense is already insane, and I'm excited to see the progression of what Scotty can be at year number two or OG Ananobi can be once he starts to really find his role with Scotty being on the floor and him staying healthy. Uh, it, was a, it was an extremely, extremely impressive season for the Toronto Raptors, who after the first month looked like they didn't really have that much in the tank. And they got to the 5C, took a couple games, and now they can smile. Next, we got a legendary performance from Christopher Emmanuel Paul. 33 points, 8 assists, 5 rebounds on 14 from 14 for the field. And some of those shots were so janky, bro. You know Chris Paul is my favorite of all time. So I was, it, was, it was super fun to watch him put on this master class. But some of those shots like hit the front lip of the rim and like bounced in. I remember when I was a shorty, and I mean like a shorty shorty, like 5, 6, 7 years old. I used to spend the night at my, my friend Rail's house and we used to watch Kirk Heinrich. Kirk Heinrich had a game winner. And I, I, don't, I don't remember what team it was against, but I vividly remember watching Kirk Heinrich hit a game winner. Either it was a game winner or a, game, a shot late in the game that did the exact same thing where it hit the lip of the rim and then rolled around and went in. And me and him as super young kids was like, there's a string on that ball, ain't it? It felt like Chris Ball had a string on that ball every time he shot a shot. And they ended up getting out of this round um, probably more difficult than they would have expected, but a win is a win. We got to show so much love to this Pelicans team. They had one of the worst starts in NBA history amongst a team that ended up making the playoffs. They ended up being the ninth seed, winning their two play-in games and getting to the spot and taking two games away from the number one seed in the Western Conference. I understand Devin Booker is missing some of this, but still, I got to show my love. I got to get my flowers. Willie Green, I, mean, I think it was game two, Willie Green gave this huge, huge, pep talk in the fourth quarter and I remember watching I'm like damn I want to play for Willie Green you know what I'm saying I'm a 25 of with no badges but I want to play for Willie Green and then you saw the pure emotion that he had after this loss where he's like I'm sure it was tears of joy more than anything you know what I'm saying of course you lose this and he he's sad about it but it's like we did something that nobody expected us to do they were on pace and I, I vividly remember on Reddit people were talking about the, the Pelicans are on pace to have the worst record in NBA history and they fought all the way back and ended up in this series and it took a magnificent one of the the greatest playoff performances of all time for them to lose it this is a close game even though Chris Paul had 33 with the perfect efficiency you know so this is a testament to Willie Green to Jose Alvarado oh first of all the whole rookie class of them Jose Alvarado Herb Jones and and uh Trey Murphy ended up hitting some big shots whether it be in the play in this series rookie class Brandon Ingram was a stud for the entire series um CJ kind of slowed down once the series went on but I mean he was being guarded by Mikael Bridges for a lot of it and it's hard to score on Mikael Bridges this is a testament of good coaching and overall having a plan and a vision from the front office. You know what I'm saying? I did not love their offseason. You know, they let Lonzo Ball go, and then they end up getting Devontae Graham. And I was like, ah, is Vontae going to actually be a, a part of this team? Turns out he's more of a regular season player than anything. But they leave uh, Lonzo Ball for the Bulls. Okay, but the thing that made this, this offseason better and something that I couldn't even have vision into is because I don't know draft classes, they're having the ability to pick up Herb or pick up Jose or draft Trey Murphy. Those are big moves. You know, the extra development of Jackson Hayes and then the in-season trade for CJ, of course, like I said, CJ didn't have a great series when you look at the overall grand scheme of things. But without CJ McCollum, they not in this position to even take two games away after the CJ McCollum strike this team looked dramatically different and we have to think about the fact that they're they're adding Zion hopefully I know people are like trying to throw out that ah the Pelicans should trade Zion they look so good without but like I don't understand that bro was amazing last season now of course we don't know what version of Zion we gonna end up getting after missing the entire season of a guy you know what I'm saying it's all about vertical and boom boom and he had knees and leg problems still I'm not trading rookie contract Zion because even if he's 90 per 80 percent of what he was last season you still got him on a deal that's pretty team friendly and he's good you know he would still be good and he would add an extra dynamic an extra element to this offense 
So I got to show them a ton of love. This is a team that I think next season, a lot of people are going to pick them to just be right out a playoff team. We got to see, obviously, what the offseason looks like for them or what Zion statuses are. Amazing season for them. Good comeback season, man. Did y'all see the Zion? The Zion? Let me let me show these Zion sneakers. I'm sorry. I know this is off topic, but Zion got his own signature sneakers. We all know. And he had a collaboration with Naruto. And you know what? Now that I'm looking at these different pictures, I only saw this colorway to start off with. And I was like, eh, I mean, I guess they're fine. But, but this next colorway, I kind of digging but i don't even know is that even part of the collaboration it's just oh okay um not too bad i'm, I'm getting at first i thought they were kind of mid but i'm looking at them right now not too bad and this is kind of cool because jordan brand also giving luca his own signature sneaker he had been hooping in these was he 34s 35s pretty much for like two seasons and he's got his own siggy and on feet i had saw an original picture of them and i'm like oh that was kind of mid on feet these are kind of kind of fire and I'm, I'm low-key kind of proud of Jordan brand because they had Russell Westbrook's signature sneaker. I thought those were mid. They had Carmelo's signature sneaker, mid. They had uh, Chris Paul's signature sneaker, mid. But like this new design team and, and Jordan brand doing their thing, man, doing their thing. I'm not saying I would cop because I'm not a hooper and that's a hooper shoe. But I'm just saying, they look decent. And lastly, let's talk about the Dallas Mavericks because, well, yeah, they got out of the first round for the first time since 2011 when they won the NBA championship. They had been on an 11-year drought of getting to the second round which is so weird to say um because they had rick carlisle and i guess jc kid came right in and was like we're gonna get us to the second round what a great series for the dallas mavericks thinking about where it started with uh luka Doncic getting injured in the last game of the regular season this could have been extremely bad but luckily jalen brunson stepped up spencer dinwiddie stepped up doran finney smith stepped up maxi kleba was the real mvp of the well, i guess jordan uh jalen brunson too jalen brunson and maxi kleba are co-mvps of the time where luka was down and then luka came right in first game i'm gonna give y'all a good 30 piece you feel me Second game, I'm going to give you like 30. And the last game, I'm going to give y'all 24 and a, a couple really clutch baskets. But uh, you know what I will say again? This probably goes into more of our preview of their series versus the um, defending Suns. I think the Jazz offensive game plan got better and better um, when Luka got there because they were just going at Luka every chance they got. Every chance they got, they was going right at Luka's head. But this is probably, at least I would hope, um, the last time we're going to see this, this core of Conley, Mitchell, Gobert, O'Neal, and Bogdanovich. Uh, they blew a 3-1 lead to the Denver Nuggets. They lost to the Clippers after Kawhi Leonard got injured. And then now they lost to a team that didn't have Luka for a good majority of it. It's not the best way to go out. I, I would imagine there's some animosity. Not saying that they can't be cool because people take that a different way. But like if I had three straight seasons where I was disappointing in the playoffs, I would probably want to change some things up. You know what I'm saying? But what I was telling the homies is that like because they're such a good regular season team, I wouldn't be surprised if ownership and the front office is like, we sell tickets, don't we? We we at least get a couple home games in the postseason, right? Let's make a couple little moves around the edges, but let's keep this core together. And I would be upset if I was a Jazz fan if that was the case, because obviously there's a lot of things that don't work. Actually, in my notes, let me read y'all one of the things in my notes, because I haven't even referred to my notes in any of these games so far. It says, every time the Mavs scored, the Jazz look at each other and point. This is game six of this series. Are we still trying to tell each other where they should be? It's the fourth quarter of game six. Why are we pointing around like, oh, you supposed to rotate this way? Oh, yeah, my fault, bro. Come on, man. <laughs> you feel me? Y'all been together for four years now. These rotations should be down back. But nope. Uh, they were still pointing. They were still pointing here and there, here and there, here and there. Um, even with that said, though, they were just one open look away from forcing the game seven. And once game seven comes around, anything can happen, man. I, home court advantage is a real thing, but I think it's over overplayed a bit. Uh, I feel like I've seen some crazy game sevens where the road team won. Immediately think about Kawhi Leonard's shot. You know, like, Think those type of things. Um, but just one really good play from Quinn Snyder, bro. That is about as open as a look as you can get. And Bogdanovich up to that point was three for five from three. And though he missed a couple shots down the stretch before that, that's a good look. That's a you live with that look, even if it was to to either keep your season alive or for it to end. The question is, what does it look like if the Utah Jazz were to blow it up? Does, does blow it up mean trade everything and next season Rudy Gobert or Donovan Mitchell is not there? Or does it mean, hey, we want to keep Dono, so let's trade Rudy to another team and kind of take a step back? Um, If I am the Utah Jazz, as long as Donovan Mitchell wants to stay there, I'm trying to retain Donovan Mitchell for as long as I can because it's not very often that the Utah Jazz is going to come to a place where they have an uh, all-star guard like that and a guy that people enjoy watching at the end of the day. 
Sneak. Um, Donovan Mitchell has his own signature sneaker. Think about that. He has his own signature sneaker. Now, I've been to the YMCA a decent amount in the last three years. I've never seen somebody wear them, but he's got his own signature sneaker. You want that type of person in your organization, even if it is just to sell tickets. So I would try to retain him and try to rebuild around him. But there is a world when Donovan's like, man, I gave y'all a blank amount of years of my career. Y'all never put the team around me. And now I want to go to this team. Or I want to get out. I think this offseason is going to be a really interesting one for the Utah Jazz. I actually had those Donovan Mitchell signature sneakers. We did a we did a shoot All-Star 2020 or 2019, whenever they first dropped. And uh, we were supposed to interview Donovan Mitchell. So they were like, no, you know what it was? It was an All-Star. It was Summer League, 2019 Summer League. We did this whole event in Vegas. And we were supposed to interview Donovan Mitchell. So his team sent us sneakers. They're like, what else? We wore these, bo let me show you these bowling shoes they gave us. They gave us these. And they didn't give any of us the right size. So I wear like a 10-ish. They gave me like an 11. And then they told you, like, you have to make your fit around wearing these. We're not hooping or nothing. We're doing a live taping of a show. And they want us to go out there in these hoop shoes. And he didn't even show up. Whoever this is is wearing them like on a red carpet. That got to be Donovan himself. Ain't nobody else wearing a pair of Donovan Mitchells on the red carpet other than him. Cool concept of a sneaker, though. Him being Spider and, and having a Spider-Man type shoe. That's, that's definitely dope. Um, sneaker itself, maybe not so much. And I believe I've gave these away to my nephew. And I don't think I ever saw him hooping these before. So signature sneakers with Kenny. Th two times in one video? Three times? I think we went over three sneakers. Signature sneakers. Either way. Again, I'm not giving y'all my full preview, but round two should be very, very interesting, man. I think we're in for some really good series. We found out this morning, I'm in the line for the DMV at the DMV, and we find out that Chris Middleton is not playing in that series. And of course, that dramatically changes things. Um, but I got to figure out how much, you know, is it so dramatic that I'm picking the Celtics to win? I just think that the series, both of them, both of these teams look so dominant in their series. Talk about Milwaukee and Boston. But I'm trying to figure out how much of what we just saw was real versus we're playing against terrible competition for our standards. You know what I'm saying? The Boston Celtics are not going to have a tough time replicating the defense they played on Kevin Durant just because Giannis is a different kind of dominant. Kevin Durant is kind of a finesse dominant, a shoot over you dominant, a silky smooth dominant, while Giannis is I'm going to run straight through you dominant. And what we saw in that Chicago Bulls series, though, is that the Bulls drew a ton of offensive fouls on Giannis. And the Bulls aren't a good defensive team. The Bulls don't have a ton of players that are used to sacrificing their body. The Boston Celtics do. I've seen Marcus Smart. I've seen Al Horford. I've seen Grant Williams. I've seen all these people take hella charges in their time. So the number that we saw of offensive uh, fouls in Chicago might go up in this Boston series. But even with that said, Giannis is the best player in the world, so he might be able to adjust. So I'm not completely sure where I'm going with things. We still got to figure out what the end of this Memphis-Minnesota series is going to look like. More than likely, I'm picking the Warriors over whatever team comes out of that. But I still want to know who it's going to be before I do a deep dive. What is Devin Booker's health situation going to be like? Because even today, even though he hit one of the biggest shots of the entire game, he looked 70%, 65% of himself. How much or what percentage are we going to get of him? And then again, yeah, Joel Embiid's hand. James Harden's explosiveness. Jimmy Butler's injury. Kyle Lowry's injury. This is so, the injury bug is all over the league, except for the Warriors right now, right? The Warriors are relatively healthy. I mean, of course, like James Wiseman and stuff, but we don't. Let me know what you think about these games tonight. You can also give me your predictions, but you, you also might want to save that for the prediction video. It's really up to you.